Good evening! We have exciting news to share with you today. The first part of this event for 45 minutes is going to be a keynote in which we are going to discuss the following topics. What's our vision for the future of rockets? The second topic of this is going to be dedicated to a revolutionary, new, sustainable, extremely cost-effective rocket that we are developing here at ARCA. The third topic is going to be dedicated to finances and we are going to see how are we going to finance this project and how much does it cost. And finally, we are going to discuss about Arca's heavy rocket. And don't forget, after this keynote, for another 45 minutes, we are going to have a Q&A section in which you can uh, join us live and ask us uh, direct questions. As you know, in the past couple of years, we worked very hard to create an unprecedented, cost-effective and sustainable rocket technology. But ARCA isn't a stranger from the quest of sustainable flight, and we've created one of the most interesting sustainable flight solutions. So, innovation and sustainability is in our DNA. Let's take a look at a short video with our previous projects. we've designed, built and launched ecological rocket engines of which byproducts are only oxygen and water. We've also designed and built and launched the world's largest solar balloons that use only solar radiation and air to create lift and lift into the atmosphere our uh, rockets. So we use these balloons as first stages for uh, our rockets. Also, we've created electric aircraft like uh, the Air Straddle Large Drone and Vertical Takeoff and Landing uh, Aircraft Defiant and the amazing uh, Arca board. And now the rocket that will forever change the face of uh, spaceflight industry. An unprecedented, cost effective, and sustainable rocket. But we are going to talk about this a little bit uh, later. One of the most important things in my life and in this team's life happened uh, a couple of years ago when the Air Force decided to open a permanent exhibition at the Air Force Museum in uh, Bucharest displaying all these technologies so we can literally say that ARCA officially made history. We've made history so far, but what lies ahead of us is way more impressive. So let's see our vision for the future of rockets. First of all, let's acknowledge that there is a fierce competition for space launch supremacy out there. And this competition is fierce because the old players are starting to lose access to government money and uh, private contracts in favor of the new players, the innovators. The old players learn that their position is shaky and it's only a matter of time until it's going to become even a matter of their survival. But why is their position shaky? Well, we think mainly because of three factors. The development cost of new vehicles, the launch cost, of course, and the third factor that just recently appeared, but we think is going to have a very strong long-term effect, the sustainability. The innovators are advancing new technologies or are using the old ones in an uh, innovative way and slowly but surely they are establishing themselves as the new leaders. 
The old players are trying to keep up with the new players by timidly innovating, but because of the fact that they are using old technology, which is of course uh, reliable and uh, well established, and because of their inertia, they are unable to keep up with the innovators. And because of the fact that they are not able to bring radical innovation into their design and technology, their role in the space launch industry is going to diminish. We might even see them leaving the space launch stage. This, in our opinion, on long term, is going to become a matter of when rather than if. But what are we referring to when we speak about the new players? Are we referring to the companies that were incorporated after a certain date? Well, not necessarily. We are referring to the companies that are able to bring radical innovation and through this they are able to challenge the old players with a better product and better services. Usually the industry players are pushing the envelope to gain a few more seconds of specific impulse by increasing the chamber pressure, by densifying their propellants by means of subcooling them or by using for instance methane instead of kerosene or by 3D printing their engines. All of this result in improved 70 years old technology, nothing more. Reusability, another trend in today's uh, space launch industry, did not deliver the expected cost reduction and the prices remain high. Why is this? Because after each flight the rockets need extensive uh, checking and refurbishing leading to a long turnaround time. Apparently no effort was enough to make the space flight truly affordable. All these efforts, in our opinion, were doing nothing more than to improve decades old technologies while the prices of spaceflight still remain very high. We were convinced that the answer to a significant spaceflight cost reduction will come from a radically innovative design mated with a new technology. A very good example of a radically innovative design is coming from a well-known US company that is proposing a heavy rocket. But in our opinion there is a problem with this and the problem is they are using decades old technologies and these technologies were developed 70 years ago during the Cold War when both the Soviet Union and United States had unlimited resources. Using these technologies today will do nothing more than perpetuate the culture of insanely high cost for spaceflight. Obviously, a radically new design is the right step forward towards the creation of a more cost-effective space launch vehicle. But when a rocket costs hundreds of millions or even billions to develop, it is clear for us there is a lot of room for improvement. Therefore, we asked ourselves four fundamental questions. And the first question that we asked ourselves was why are rocket launches expensive? The rocket launches are expensive because the vehicles themselves, the fabrication and the launch operations are very complex. Complexity leads to very high cost. And the second question that we asked ourselves was why are rocket systems complex? Because of their propellants that are cryogenic, are explosive, are volatile, are carcinogenic, are burning at very high temperatures and the pressures in the engine. All of these characteristics are leading to the necessity to have complex machinery, operations and safety measures in order to be able to handle these extreme parameters. And the third question that we asked ourselves was how can we avoid rocket's complexity? Well, since the root cause of the rocket's complexity is the nature of their propellants, it was clear for us that bringing small improvements to the actual systems is not going to help us create a truly cost-effective launch vehicle. So, we decided that a different, radically new approach is necessary. Eliminate or at least reduce the use of these cryogenic, polluting, carcinogenic, explosive, volatile propellants and replace this with something different. And the fourth and final question that we asked ourselves was 
what potential propellant has completely different properties than the current ones. As much as it may seem a very bold approach, we thought about the cheapest, cleanest and the easiest available liquid water. And we thought about ways to work with it. After a long time and uh, a lot of debates, we concluded that the only option that we have uh, right now to work with the water as a rocket propellant is to heat the water and then evaporate the water into the engine and uh, then accelerating the vapors into a convergent-divergent uh, nozzle. On top of everything, water as propellant did not uh, only lead to the creation of an unprecedented cost-effective rocket vehicle, but it also came with a great feature, no pollution. But the question arose, how can you use a rocket that offers only 50 to 60 seconds of specific impulse? This in itself will never be able to reach orbit and not even perform a suborbital uh, flight. We were literally struggling to find an option to work with a rocket with such low performance. Because when you look at the current rockets that have uh, specific impulses that are around four times higher than what you are proposing, I must admit we were thinking a lot of times this isn't going to work. But the tremendous advantages offered by the water as propellant in terms of uh, safety, cost effectiveness and environment protection was what kept us pushing to try to find an option to work with such a great propellant. And now I'm going to invite Florine to tell us more about how we ended up working with this water-based ecological cost-effective propulsion technology. Thank you, Dumitru. Just when we were about to quit working with the water-based propulsion system, because of its low performance, we looked at the Space Shuttle and Ariane 5's solid rocket boosters that have low performance compared with their main engines. Their impulse and their propellant mass to empty mass ratio is very low, but its thrust to weight ratio is very high, as we can see from this table. It was clear that what matters for boosters is the thrust to weight ratio, while the specific impulse is of secondary importance. As long as the thrust to weight ratio is higher than the first stages, the booster will fulfill its duty to contribute to the vehicle's acceleration during ascent, regardless of the booster's impulse. Based on this conclusion, the team started to make simulations to see the impact of a water booster on an orbital vehicle's performance. We named this technology the Launch Assist System, or LAS. At the end of 2018, we started the development and we worked very hard to demonstrate this technology. We started with a small demonstrator and we scaled up to a full-size first stage. Let's take a look at some of the ground support equipment and the tests that we performed for the Launch Assist System. Impulses from 50 to 60 seconds, the engine's performance is lower compared to the ones using classic propellants. But we found it ideal to assist the launch of current rockets. In the corresponding size for the lifted payload, 
It can transport any second stage to altitudes of 3000 meters and speeds of Mach 2. It was concluded that the LIS can be used both as booster and first stage for an orbital rocket, providing a boost of their payload weight with up to 30% or make the current rockets use 25% less polluting propellant. And now let's invite Dumitru again to tell us more about how we decided to use the launch assist system and what's next. In our opinion, there are four types of space launch innovations. Innovation through the use of old technology with small design improvements. Innovation of uh, old technology with uh, radically new designs. Innovation through the use of uh, completely new technologies and uh, a combination of uh, a radically new design with uh, a completely new technology. Now let's take a look at what we are calling the design and technology innovation chart. On the vertical axis we have the technology innovation and on the horizontal axis we have the concept design innovation. We also put into this uh, chart some of the current rocket uh, designs as examples. We can see in the bottom left uh, corner the SLS that is using uh, the Space Shuttle technology arranged in a different way. We can see the Launcher 1 that reminds me of the Pegasus Air launched uh, system and we can see the Ariane uh, 6 rocket that is an upgraded version, virtually an upgraded version of uh, Ariane 5. So there is almost no innovation there in terms of new technology and and uh, new design. So obviously there is almost no source of uh, significant cost uh, reduction of um, their launch services. And I'm not counting here the subsidies which in the case of uh, Ariane 6 this is uh, heavily subsidized. Also in this corner we have the Electron rocket with their uh, innovative electric pumps which are definitely a step forward towards technology innovation. We can see in the bottom right uh, corner rockets like uh, Falcon 9, New Glenn and uh, Starship Super Heavy. Uh, these rockets are proposing significantly new designs because of their usability. So we can uh, expect significant cost uh, reduction for their launches. Especially in the case of uh, Starship Super Heavy, this cost uh, reduction is going to be serious, is going to be significant because eventually both stages are going to be reusable. But there's a downside to these uh, designs because they are still using old technology and because of this the cost to develop them is still very high and here Arca wants to make a huge step forward by using a completely new different technology. But bottom right corner wasn't good enough for us. It's not good enough for a team for which innovation is the core value. We need to go on the top right corner and raise above everyone with a better product and better services. And we knew that by packing new technology together with a new design we will be able to bring the innovation that will eventually lead to a dramatic cost reduction of orbital launches. So we combined the launch assist system as uh, first stage together with the Haas uh, rocket as uh, upper stage and we were able to reduce the amount of polluting propellant by 50% and reduce the cost of uh, Haas rocket launch for the same performance two times. It's true. We also increased the launch mass with uh, 40% but because of the cost reduction I would say it's a fair trade. After we announced the launch assist system, we received a lot of messages asking us why we are not using the combination of liquid hydrogen and uh, liquid oxygen since this combination is also pollution free and it comes with a significantly higher performance in terms of specific impulse. Well, it is true this combination is also pollution free but because of the special safety measures required by uh, cryogenic propellants because of the deep cryogenic temperatures of uh, liquid hydrogen and high volatility this option is probably the most expensive one out there and using this combination will defy the very purpose of what we are trying to achieve here. Beside environment protection, the creation of the most cost-effective rocket vehicle. 
So in our opinion, the next generation rockets should pack both technology innovation as well as innovative design. And we think ARCA found a way towards the creation of a vehicle that is both sustainable as well as cost effective. We are working right now on the launch vehicle of the future. ARCA's new ecological, extremely cost effective rocket is called LAS-25DA plus has to ca Mini. No, that's a mouthful. Arca's new rocket is called Echo Rocket and I'm excited to show it to you right now. It's a new, revolutionary rocket, built with sustainability in mind. 10 times more cost-effective than any other rocket on the planet. And it's going to launch next year, no later than June. This rocket has a weight of 4.4 tons and a height of 11 meters. The payload capability is of 10 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Using an extra stage with exactly this engine, the payload capability could be significantly boosted. This rocket's first stage is basically an aerospace shuttle, lifting the second stage to the launch altitude, allowing the reduction of polluting propellant with 70%. Yes, you've heard me well, 70%. The first stage flies for 40 seconds until it reaches an altitude of 8.5 kilometers and a speed of Mach 2.5. At this altitude, the second stage is released and continues all the way to orbit for another 140 seconds. At the same time, the first stage descends to Earth and lands under its own engine on the same launch pad. So let's take a tour of this uh, rocket. It has two stages built entirely from composite materials. The first uh, stage is based on the LAS technology already developed and tested at uh, ARCA and it has obviously an uh, aerospike rocket engine. The first stage's main uh, feature is that it uses a vertical takeoff and landing uh, sequence. What very few people know is that the first stage it uses the second generation of the launch assist system that in increases the performance of the first stage from 50 seconds of specific impulse up to 80 seconds. And this, of course, is a very well-guarded secret here at ARCA. And this boost of performance will increase the first stage's capability from 3 kilometers of uh, altitude up to 8.5 kilometers and the speed of Mach 2.5. Obviously, the first stage remains 100% ecological. The second stage is significantly smaller and it also uses an aerospike rocket engine that runs on 90% hydrogen peroxide and kerosene. And what is indeed exceptional is that the Echo rocket uses the smallest amount of polluting propellant ever used to launch a satellite. The second stage uses 480 kilograms of propellant, out of which only 70 kilograms are made of kerosene, which is the equivalent of a tank for a truck. And in this tank is the whole amount of kerosene that this rocket is going to use. And what is even better is that by using the second generation of the launch assist uh, system, we were able to increase the altitude start of the second stage from 3 kilometers to 8.5 kilometers, which means that the polluting burn for the second stage happens in the vast majority of the time above the Earth atmosphere. The rocket has four stabilizer fins that are also used as landing legs. We are also going to build for the launch a deflector for the hot gases together with a huge water sprinkler. No, who uses this? The rockets that are using 70 years old technologies? Yes. Eco rocket? No. 
and this is another huge cost cut in favor of the Echo Rocket. This rocket is going to take off and land on its own legs, and of course, there is no risk of damaging the vehicle or the launch pad because the exhaust gases from the engine have a temperature of only 90 degrees Celsius. We have the following schedule for the Echo Rocket. This year, December 5th, Mission 9, demonstrating flight, the vertical takeoff and landing sequence for the Echo Rocket. Next year, March 1st, complete the ground test for the second stage. Next year, April 1st, perform a suborbital flight for the second stage of the Echo Rocket. Also, next year, June 1st, perform the first orbital launch attempt of the Echo Rocket. Also, next year, October 1st, perform the first qualification flight for commercial services for the Echo Rocket. So, to conclude, this rocket is eco-friendly. It has a completely ecological first stage. It uses for both stages the high-efficiency aerospike rocket technology. It avoids the complex, heavy and expensive ground infrastructure. It takes off and lands on its own legs. It's the most cost-effective rocket development in history and the most important, it's at least 10 times more cost-effective to launch than any other rocket in the world. Let's talk about finances now, and here the things are starting to become really, really interesting. It is our objective to keep the development cost of the Echo Rocket under 1 million euros, and in this way to demonstrate that the Echo Rocket is the orbital vehicle with the lowest development cost ever. Let's take a look at uh, some of uh, our competitors from uh, Europe that aim to develop uh, small orbital launchers. For instance, we have the Arion rocket from uh, Spain and Spectrum rocket from uh, Germany. Both projects uh, were able to secure so far around 17 million euros as far as we know from the press uh, releases and the Echo rocket is going to cost only 1 million euros. Now you may ask yourself from this where cost discrepancy between the Echo rocket and the other uh, two projects. Well, there are various uh, factors. One of the most important is uh, our uh, vast experience with rapid prototyping and uh, with a lot of other projects that we developed in the past 20 years. But uh, obviously the most important advantage is given by the innovative propulsion technology that we are using for the first stage. Let's not forget that the first stage for the Echo Rocket and not only for the Echo Rocket, for any rocket is the largest piece of hardware for uh, a um, launch vehicle. Using water, using this innovative propulsion technology that is safe, that uh, is not very demanding in terms of uh, machinery and uh, the technology that you are developing, this significantly reduces the cost. So we are not uh, a only a disruptive company in terms of uh, technology, we are also a disruptive company in terms of uh, development cost and of course in terms of the launch cost because now you may ask yourself how much does it cost a single launch for the Echo rocket and the answer is also disruptive. We aim for $390,000 per uh, launch and therefore Echo rocket is going to become the orbital vehicle with the lowest cost per launch in history. Here the things are also starting to become very interesting because at this cost per launch, universities, companies and even private individuals will be able to secure a launch for the Echo rocket to launch their payload into orbit. Let's take a look to another competitor, the Electron rocket. They have a price per launch at $7 million. Once again, Echo rocket $390,000. Of course, the Electron rocket is a more capable vehicle in terms of payload weight, but what I want to point out here is that at $390,000 per launch, the Echo rocket is going to establish an unprecedented low cost per launch for any orbital uh, vehicle ever created. But why did we want to develop fast and at the lowest possible cost a small orbital launcher? I'll let Larissa explain why. Thank you, Dumitru. The European Commission is awarding a 10 million euro prize to a new team able to submit the best project of a small launcher in terms of excellence, capacity to launch and operate at a low cost and with low impact on the environment, technical implementation, maturity of launch system, ground segment and production, service sustainability, economic viability and service quality. 
Solution for the EU – free, unrestricted access to the technology. Strategic importance – security critical for the EU. So, we have half year to complete the EcoRocket project and win the 10 million euro prize. The EcoRocket is here, but what about the long-term development? I let Dumitru tell you more because it's truly fascinating. The 10 million euros competition allows the formation of uh, consortiums. So we are open to form partnerships that will uh, help us win the 10 million euros competition. Also, we are open to bring uh, members into the team, new members into the team. So if you think that you can bring value to this uh, effort and uh, support this uh, effort to win the 10 million euros competition with the Echo Rocket, we are more than uh, happy to welcome you. The Echo Rocket is just the beginning. Echo Rocket Heavy will follow because we want to beat everyone on the market with a better product in terms of launch cost and environment protection. The Echo Rocket Heavy is going to be a scaled up version of this uh, Echo Rocket. Eventually, also, the second stage is going to be reusable. The Echo Rocket uh, Heavy will have a payload capability of 60 tons to low Earth orbit. Now, the first stage of the Echo Rocket is going to act, as in the case of the Echo Rocket, as a shuttle that will deliver the second stage to the launch altitude. What is very interesting is that um, this first stage will be able to carry various second stages with payloads ranging from 1 ton to 60 tons. In this way, the second stage will be adapted for the mission that needs to be carried out, while the first stage will remain the same. There will be a common interface between the first stage and all the second stages that will uh, transport. And now I'm going to tell you that the cost per launch for each... Uh, flight of the Echo Rocket's heavy first stage is going to be $490,000. For the second stage of the Echo Rocket heavy, we aim at the price per launch of $690,000. So in total, the Echo Rocket heavy cost per launch is $1,080,000, which is in the price range of Starship Super Heavy. Well, this is pretty much a revolution and this is possible because so far we've heard so many times that spaceflight is about legacy, is about following the well-known path. Well, not anymore. These days is mostly about innovation. A very good example of uh, the fact that the space industry is changing is because of the Starship Super Heavy project. They said that uh, after the both stages will become fully usable, they are aiming at the cost per uh, kilogram of $20 and at the cost per launch of uh, $2 million. We should give them full credit because I'm uh, pretty sure they ran some uh, numbers over there. And uh, I must admit that with the Echo Rocket Heavy, we really want to bring the fight to this uh, project. And in our opinion, the Echo Rocket Heavy is the only project that can give the Starship Super Heavy a run for uh, its money. Now you may ask yourself if the development cost of the Echo Rocket is only 1 million euros, how much is the development cost of the Echo Rocket Heavy? We estimate a cost of 30 million euros, which definitely is in the range in the capability of uh, medium sized investors. So we don't estimate too many problems in securing this uh, funding in the years to come, especially after the first launch of the Echo Rocket next year in June. Uh, June. And now I want to take this opportunity to make a very important announcement. The development of the Echo Rocket Heavy already started right here at this facility and we are going to see more in the months to come. Now let's talk a little bit about sustainability and why we think it's going to become a vital part of the future spaceflight industry. Current rockets, as we saw, are using uh, polluting, toxic, carcinogenic, cryogenic, volatile, explosive propellants. And all of these characteristics of their propellants are bringing uh, very high cost, development cost and uh, launch and operation uh, cost for these uh, rockets. Now with the Echo Rocket, it's true, it's significantly less efficient compared with the rockets that are using the polluting propellants, but 
efficiency isn't something that we are necessarily chasing here because in all honesty our clients will not care about high performance about high specific impulse or about crazy pressures in the engine's chamber what they will care of will be to deliver their payloads in the safest possible way and at the lowest possible cost We've received a lot of comments from supporters of other fellow space companies asking us why are we chasing the development of a sustainable launch vehicle since the rockets are not polluting as much as uh, automobiles and airplanes. And you know what? They are right. The rockets are not polluting as much as the automobiles or the airplanes. But we are chasing this for two reasons. The first reason is that using water as propellant is significantly more cost effective than using the polluting propellants. And the second reason is responsibility. Every human should care about environment protection. We should make environment protection part of our culture in every field of activity, spaceflight included. And our answer to those who are asking us why are we developing a sustainable launch vehicle is you should start thinking about developing one too instead of asking us why. Now something very weird happened to me a few months ago on social media, on Twitter to be more uh, precise. When I received a public comment from uh, an executive from a fellow space company from Ariane Works, which is a division of uh, Ariane Space, and this executive uh, might be even the head of this uh, division, he was saying that sincerity isn't our first uh, quality. I was very surprised to receive such a comment from um, an executive from a fellow space company. But uh, I can understand that there might be some frustration over their, their headquarters, taking into account that they also aim to develop a vertical takeoff and landing uh, system. But now with the start of the development of the Echo Rocket uh, Heavy, I can understand that this is going to become a direct competitor of uh, Ariane 6. Echo Rocket Heavy is going to be built with uh, sustainability and environment protection in uh, mind. So let's take a look at uh, the type of uh, propulsion that Ariane 6 is using for their uh, solid rocket boosters. Yeah, these SRBs are pretty poisonous. So, whatever you like it or not, guys, we are going to compete both on vertical takeoff and landing technology as well as environment protection. Good luck. So, that's it for this keynote. See you at the live QA section in around 15 minutes.